Sorry, chewing a nail at the same time. We can do a very obvious take. So, Jenny. And one, two, three, we're back in the room. So Jenny, when you were younger, how did you get on boats? Obviously you've been boating, you said, all your life. Who started it? Did your dad have boats? Did your mum like to go on boats? I mean, where did it all begin? Because you're one of these rare people that are very careful now. You're one of the few women I know that could handle a boat probably better than anyone I know. That was so well said because I can't tell you how many times I dock a boat and people are like, you do that better than most men I know. And I'm like, I can appreciate the, com the compliment behind this, but what they're saying in actuality is, you're doing that better than the bad men that I know. And I, they don't think about how it sounds. I disagree with that. I think it's seeing a woman do something cool like that is pretty hot. Like, well the, then the hot say, wow, you do that better than most captains I know. Not than some men I know. It's, you do it better than the bad men I know, is, is what it's saying. And I'm not one of those feminist think, people, you know me. Oh yeah, but I think you're taking that wrong. Like, um, the hottest I've ever seen my wife is when we went skeet shooting. She had boots and a shotgun. I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And it's not because it's something a man would do. It's because it's a powerful thing, right. I think. And she did it well. <laughs> Better than me. <laughs> yeah. And it's a heavy gun. It's like, you know, you, you got to have some, some grip behind that to do that. Same thing with docking a boat. It's technically quite a challenge. And you to do it well, you've had a lot of experience. I have. Took turns. So you had boats when you were young, obviously. We did, you? my whole life. So, um, you know, I always drove on my dad's lap learning how to drive and That's he cool. had a 53 sport fish growing up and he, I, When he was growing up? No, no, when I was growing up. Oh, wow. Up. So, I, my dad used to teach me how to learn to drive with two throttles at the bridge. Mm. He would go down and I, I don't know what he was doing, making a drink, going to the bathroom and I would just sit there and learn how to drive at the bridge because you just have to keep it straight. Yeah. It was like the easiest way, it's a common sense thing to learn how to drive with two end engines. Mm. Um, and being thrown into it and doing it yourself, yeah, you learn yeah. pretty quick. So when I was 11, he taught me how to dock that boat and to dock a 53 foot at 11 is you know, pretty, pretty impressive. Cool. Yeah. Did you stand with your back to it like this? <laughs> I probably did, but I wasn't standing. I was sitting on the chair. Yeah, well, 11, I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah I was little. But uh, yeah, I, I grew up learning boats and I didn't have, you know, I think if he had a son, it would have been his special bond with a son and yeah. he didn't. So I kind of learned the ropes and I loved boats and I never ever imagined I would be a yacht broker, but I am. And I guess I can thank my dad for that. Do you find, uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Wicker. But do you find that uh, a lot of yacht brokers have the same kind of background experience you do? Or do you get a lot of new people coming in that don't know that much about boats or how to dock boats? I think it's both. I mean, I think uh, there are brokers that don't know anything about boats, and quite honestly, I'm not sure why they are brokers. I think they said they saw brokers making money, yep. and they're like, I want to do that too. And they might have sold real estate before. Um, I think there are people Which is that definitely chalk and cheese. <laughs> I think there are people that were mates on a boat or captains on a mm -hmm. boat and yep. saw the bigger picture. And then I think there were people that just, that's what they wanted to do. They Does that make you boats. different that someone could say, I want to see that boat and you're like, I've got the keys, let's go. You can drive it. Is there many brokers that can do that competently? I think, I think so. I think there are okay. a lot of old captains. I wouldn't do it. It's a liability. Right. Um, I, okay. I don't even want to start engines when someone's on a boat. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I okay. mean, you don't know what kind of maintenance they just had, and you well, don't for, know. For if one of your boats, like here, that you know the maintenance good. I suppose where we are on the river here, it's a bit treacherous, especially with a million-dollar boat right there. But uh, on something smaller, like a center console, if you're selling it, it's you know, I'll jump on. I'll show you how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You'd be comfortable. Uh, yeah, if the, if I was close with the owner. See, that's badass. No, so then, not that. What you're saying it. is, it's salesmanship. It's both. Yeah. It's each everybody has their own way of selling. I'm like a patient salesperson. I mm. Rick and I work well together because he's always got a million things going on. And if he has someone that's really slow, he'll be like, Jenny, take this person. Mm. And I'm okay, gladly. I'll do it. I'll work them for a year. Yeah, that's okay with me. And it works. And then at the end of the day, he gets a sale and I get the sale. It's smart on his part. Yeah, spoke broke, which is definitely a, a slow, a slow burn, right? Like sometimes it's quick. Sometimes you'll meet people at a boat show. I, last year, I got an offer at the boat show. And was, was that the quickest sale you've ever done? 
Like, what's the quickest, like, from meeting the person to selling the boat? I mean, have you ever got one that's like, I've seen this boat, could you help me close on it, and you do it straight away, or? I, the quickest closing I probably had was 10 days. Um, Pretty good. I know people that have done it in one day. You can't really do the proper paperwork in that amount of time, but. Yeah. But and I always suggest to people that they survey a boat. Some people are like, I don't care, I'm gonna take the gamble. I'm like, well, you have to do an insurance survey anyway, so. Yeah. Who would do that this day? Because it's always the broker that's gonna get it in the neck, isn't it? Like, well, you didn't make me do a survey. You told me you didn't want one. Yeah. Ah, oh, that sucks. You right? So, I have actually one client that I showed him a boat, and I would say in two days he made an offer on it and closed in it, closed on it like probably a week later. Um, we did not survey it or sea trial it, and he, his reasoning was, he's a car salesman, and he says, that, that's the name of the game. You know, he made a really low offer, but I'm gonna make a low offer, but here's what I'm gonna do for you. And um, he did. And then we put it in the boat show last year and sold it, and he's now into his brand new 75 cent sticker that he got two weeks ago. So, and I just met him a year and a half ago. But that's, that's really rolling the dice with the boat though, isn't it? I mean. It is, but that was a gamble he was willing to take. Hmm. Now, if it had gone bad, he would never have bought a boat again. <laughs> Probably not from me. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't have been your fault. It's a, it's it's my eyes... job to steer someone to survey a boat, and I tried. Yeah. He so just yeah, didn't want to. This is the question, then. If you know a boat bad, will you still sell it? No. Okay. Well, well, what do you mean by bad, though? Are we talking this? There some... are brokers that will. Like, for instance, if I know a boat hit something and had major structural damage and the owner didn't want me telling anyone, which I'm supposed to tell. If I know something, I'm supposed to disclose it. Yeah. But um, if I knew that, I just, I, I would tell them, you don't want this boat. It's just, it's not worth it. If yeah. there's a boat that I know is a piece of junk, um, I would rather tell them no yeah. and keep them as a client in the long run then I would make an easy sale and never have a sale again. Here's a question for you. Is there guidelines for brokers like EBA? Do they regulate you guys? And I'll tell you why, because I was speaking to someone who works in a yard, won't name any names, and he was the project manager on a, for an owner, and he was going around the, with the broker, and they were like, so the boat was hauled for survey? And the broker, oh yeah, we need to sandblast the bottom and paint it. So the owner turned to the broker and was like, well, how much and how long is it going to take? The broker said, it's about a 20 grand job, it'll take a week. And this guy from the shipyard was like, no, 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 no. That's a hundred thousand dollar job in six weeks. So, and he was like, these brokers, they'll they'll lie to get the sale. Do you reckon he did that on purpose or just didn't know? He probably and, didn't know. That's that is a problem. People don't and, and know, is, and, and they talk out of their. And is there guidelines for this industry to prevent that kind of stuff from happening? Like, is there a bar that you can report that broker to for like this guy? So not a bar, but it. like EBA has an ethics committee. Right. Now, can EBA go after your license? I don't think so, but EBA is a, for and those of you who don't know the International Yacht Brokers Association, um, you know, we do have ethics to uphold to, and you can get reported to the ethics committee, and they will call you in, and they will talk to you about what you just did that was wrong. Do you want to piss off some of the top brokers? No, I no. think, I don't know if there's a polite way of saying this, sorry, but I don't want to get blackballed from the industry. Yeah, you know? and that's what you'll get, get, right? Yeah. Like, don't buy a boat from that guy, he's on this list. Right. Is, is there a list? I don't know if there's a list, but there's definitely reputations, and this industry is quite large, but very small. But what we've learned from this industry is very forgiving. Like people who shouldn't be in business, like doing marine work, who continually screw over customers, still do work. It's in, and some manufacturers as well that have had a real bad run of it still get work. We're just baffled by it sometimes. It's the only industry I've ever been in or looked at that actually has this much forgivingness. So I don't know what my point was there. But, well, uh, but I, I think there should be a list. Like if you, before you buy anything, go to the Angels list of the marine world, look them up. Oh crap, they've had this, 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 this. There should be a lot more hand, you know, ball breaking. I'd love to see that happen. Um, I'm on a committee right now for for EBA Public Affairs, and the state wants to start regulating licenses. Okay. And um, they, what you do with they want us to come up with, well, California has a test that you have to take. Okay. And they want us to come up with an exam for the state. Now, that and sounds I like think a good it's idea. excellent. Yeah. Now, seasoned brokers that have been doing this forever are like, screw that. I'm not going to do that. I've been doing this forever. I don't want someone to tell me. But I think it's it would eliminate a lot of the riffraff. We have people that you know, work on boats and 
they already have a full-time job and then come in and want to sell one boat a year and it takes away from us who are dedicating our lives to it really yeah. and if we had a test and made people knowledgeable you know that guy selling one boat a year he doesn't know what's going on with taxes or laws and regulations he's not going to seminars and um he's not up with he doesn't know anything about documentation and he's giving us a bad rep because he sells one boat a year one boat a year and it's it's not good for us yeah interesting that is because at the moment you're correct if I'm wrong, you